Hey guys, um, I've had a lot of people ask me about seeing the kind of stuff we do behind the scenes and it's definitely not very glamorous, but it might be interesting to some people. So um, today I've kind of given up all control over the 3D printing space. It's just taken a life of its own and kind of expanded everywhere. You can probably even hear it running in the background. Um, I had it all all of my 3D printers, which was three 3D printers in my utility room that has like the furnace and everything. And with all of the Kessel Sabak orders and such, then we've had to rapidly expand our 3D printing setup to where now we've got eight bamboo printers. So it's taken over our studio space where we usually try and film videos like this one. And so today I will be setting up what will be I guess our print farm, I guess is what it's kind of turned into. So the idea um, is that I want to buy a shelf, some sort of shelving unit to where I can have all the printers on the shelves. And then um, on each shelf, I'm gonna have different wood slats for each printer, because I gotta try and keep the vibration down to a minimum so that they don't uh, like vibrate each other to death. Just to show you kind of our what I would kind of call our setup. So right now we've got printers on the floor going, doing chips. This one's doing tokens. Most of them are doing chips. And then in my utility room, I've got more and more printers. So I originally had three printers right here. One, two, three. It didn't really work, so I had to throw that one on the ground. So there's just a bunch of printers on the ground. And I would really like to get them off the ground so that I don't have to crawl around on my hands and knees to like remove prints from the build, build plate or whatever. So uh, step one will be going to the store and finding a shelf that'll work. Step two will be getting the wood pieces, MDF, something like that, and then taking them to my dad's place. He's got like a, a woodworking setup so I can use his table saw to kind of rip the boards so that they're the perfect size for each printer. And then step three will be, I guess, moving all of the printers out of my way. I've got to move like this whole setup, this, got to take down this, move all of my filament storage. I've got to move all of this away so that I can actually uh, build the shelf there. And then, then it'll be just like setting it all up and hoping that it works. I really want to get the printers all on this wall. Okay, I went to the store, found a shelf that I think will work. Fits in the space, should fit all the 3D printers just fine. I think I've got about 10 inches of leeway. So I've got to actually be really careful where I put my camera in my garage. I've got a lot of prototypes in here. Don't want to be giving away any secrets. So um, I've got to set up the shelf slightly just enough to measure exactly how big I need to cut the uh, or how small I need to cut the boards. Okay, quick uh, story interlude. You might have seen me using this knife, cutting stuff that uh, has no business being cut by a knife this large. And the reason for that is I actually made this knife this summer. I uh, have always been interested in like the idea of blacksmithing, but way too nervous to like ever actually try anything like it. And I was at a local farmer's market this summer and one of the vendors was a blacksmith. And I was like, you know, I've always wanted to learn how to do this type of stuff. And he's like, oh, well, I sell classes. And so for my birthday, I bought myself um, a couple blacksmithing classes. So this was the, the final project for the last class, the second class. Uh, the first one was a little like letter opener knife that was a blacksmith's knife, so it was all solid metal. This one, 
Um, this knife is particularly special to me. Um, if you notice, the wood looks quite unique. And it's got like a like iridescent quality to it. This wood I got from my father and he got the wood from his grandfather who cut down the tree and it's been kind of passed down the family and so I got a couple blanks of the wood that I could use to make the knife so I believe it's a um, I think it's a a birch like a bird's eye birch bird's eye maple I'm not I'm not a wood person or even really a blacksmithing person. I had a very good teacher. If I was asked to replicate this, I don't know if I could even get anywhere near as close, but really good teacher. Learned a lot, super fun. And so now I just use this knife and my other knife for everything because I don't actually have a purpose to own a knife this large. And so most of my knife cutting is uh, opening cardboard boxes, I've got all my pieces measured. I'm ready to go pretty much. Um, I decided I needed to quickly do some last minute prints. Um, my, all of my kids are in Boy Scouts and um, I am the leader uh, for the five-year-old Lions group, which uh, my son is a part of. And we're doing like a badge that's called Gizmos and Gadgets and I was like, I can use my 3D printers to print some gizmos and gadgets. So I've got a couple things. I've got a uh, balloon car printing. So this will be a car that um, that you stick a balloon on and then it shoots around. I think it'll be fun for the kids to, to mess around with. So uh, I've got those going. I'm going to go eat some lunch. Then it's time to head to my parents house and use their table saw and cut some of the wood to place. Okay, just got back from cutting the wood and the prints are done. So let's do a print check. Looks pretty good. Hopefully it works. I opted for no support. Looks like that was the right call. Have the kids build them tonight. Hopefully they look great. Okay. Uh, next on the list is move all of this and all of this.
Okay, well, it's been um, a couple days since uh, I originally set up the whole shelf area. Um, I haven't done really any more than what you saw. I, I don't know, yesterday I was feeling really sick, so I had, I don't know, I had no energy. Maybe I had some sort of flu, but mostly just no energy. And so I just had to lay down all day and just kind of take it easy. I'm still not up to 100% strength, but I've really got to get this, uh, all the printer stuff figured out and going. So just to give you a little bit of an update of what it looks like. So I've got three of the printers set up um, on the bottom. I've got this second row more or less ready. I just need to put like the foam and stuff on. So before I do that, I've got to get um, those four. I've got three printers out here, another printer upstairs, and I've got to get those ones uh, set up with their AMSs so that I can do uh, easy filament swapping. And then hopefully over the next couple hours, I can get it mostly all the way set up and ready to go. That's the plan. Okay, I've got some real progress done. I had to move things a little bit around. Originally I was thinking I'll have the film on the top. Well, originally I was like, maybe I'll have the filament on the bottom. And then I was like, well, maybe on the top. Well, I've, I'm back to the bottom. It needs to be on the bottom. And I've got the, uh, the first row calibrating right now and they're just starting to finish up calibrating and then I've got to install the AMS's and the waste chutes on the second row but it is looking really nice here let me move my camera so here's second row it smells like fresh cut wood in here because it is fresh cut wood and here's row two Let's see if I can get back far enough this is such a small small little area there we go all calibrating and then in between one and two and three and four is the little waste chutes that that come down and meet there's the other one so next i've got to get printers six six, seven, and eight to put the, the like uh, anti-wobble feet, the waist chute, the AMS. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I've got a brand new AMS here. Um, I'm not sure why, but bamboo gives you empty spools. So I've got a stack of empty spools right here. It seems kind of weird. I don't know if, if they expect me to like spool things onto it. I don't know. Okay, so I'll show you how I install the AMS. So there's the unit. First thing I do is throw it on top of the machine. See how much I can do this of this one handed. So here is the waste chute I was talking about. That'll get mounted right there. Um, I'm gonna need to take off the single spool. And then there's a few pieces of hardware I need to grab. Let's see, the first piece of hardware is in this bag. It's gonna be our hoses. And then we need the uh, little uh, cables. And then the last part is this spring-loaded thing that goes on the back side. Okay, now that I've got all these pieces, let's see if I can set the camera. Zoom, let's move up. There we go. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the spool holder. So the spool ho holder is there to direct feed um, filament. You'll have a spool on here. It'll direct feed into here. And that 
you use if you don't have an AMS, which I didn't for a while. But the AMSs are, are nice. Nothing else, just to auto swap spools. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, next thing we're going to do is pull out the long one. We need the long one. I don't know if it matters which color is which. Uh, it says out and in. Huh. I think, the, I think my other ones are swapped, but I'll have to double check. Okay, so that goes in there. Um, next part we need is to put this board, this little spring activated thing so it I'm not sure what it's for but it springs but I think I left the little screws yep the little tiny bolts right there so this just gets put on pretty sure this has something to do with the tension of the filament but like I said I don't really know Slightly off. Probably tighten this one a little bit too tight before getting this one to position. There we go. Okay. So now this goes in here, and then this goes. And that side. Okay. Now, the next part, we need to get the cables. To actually power everything. And then of course you can daisy chain these up to four of them, so you can do up to 16 color prints. So now, those two screws that I took out for the, the uh, spool holder, I'm now gonna add those, I'm gonna use those to attach my waste chute. And then, this one will be ready to join the assembly line. This waste chute system I just found on um, Bamboo's, I think it's called Maker Space, Maker World, Maker something. Someone had modeled this up to be used with bamboo printers side by side, and that is exactly what I have is printers side by side. So, okay. And the second screw. Okay, and then one final modification before it joins, I guess. And that is these feet. So to give you an idea, so this is the standard bamboo foot. And then this one is the, uh, let's see what they actually call it. Uh, anti-vibration feet. So what it does is it allows the bamboo machine to like vibrate on itself, but it doesn't allow it to like shake the whole cabinet or shelf that it's on. So my thought was if all of my printers have these anti-vibration feet, then I'll be easily able to hopefully have eight printers in one spot. Okay, so I'm just going to hang it over slightly, pull these feet off, point that a little bit further down. Okay. And so the, the original ones have like some sort of sticky goo on it. This one just goes right into the grooves. So it's a more mechanical fit as opposed to an adhesive fit. 
which I prefer. Okay. Now I'll just lean it off the other side. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing at this point. You definitely can't see exactly what I'm doing at this point, but I'm doing the exact same thing, the last two feet. There we go. Okay, put it back on the table. And now, ready to move it in to the 3D printer space. Okay, let me go get the printer. Oh, let's unplug it. I don't want to drag the cable everywhere. Okay. Okay. And then I just need to have my little container right in the middle, right there. Both sides can go down. And then the last thing to do is grab that power cable back up. And plug her in. This is definitely as awkward as it seems it might be to try and plug it in. Also, since I can't remember the orientation of the plug. There we go. Okay. And then I'll stick it under my UPS. There. Okay. Now we're ready to go. So this one apparently had a firmware update. Oh, now, time to calibrate it. I'm trying to calibrate them in pairs. This one has a, a load of uh, chips that need to be taken off, which I've got a box right here for. Okay. Print bed back in. And then it's not turned on right now, so let's get it going. It's a little bit annoying to, to, to grab the power switch because it's like right underneath there. And then we'll start calibrating these two. And then the last thing is I've got two more printers, one right there, one upstairs. And then I will be completely done with setting them all up. So next update, you'll see it all up and running. Hopefully I have all the printers calibrated and completely running and ready to go. Well, I got it all done. And uh, if you'll notice, the lights are not flashing. So when I first started this project, I had only four printers in here and the lights would flash when they were going. So, but I was able to like space it out a little bit more. And now with all eight printers, no lights flashing. It's great. So they're uh, all printing tokens right now. Let me see if you can see. They're printing um, three rows and five columns 
to get all 16 between all the printers, you get multiple sets of the 16. So there's the bottom row going and the top row going. What a project. Uh, I was hoping it would take me one day and with my sickness ended up taking, I mean, two full days of work and then a day of being sick, but I finally got it done. Now, uh, now I just got to clean up all the mess. The other thing is I really want to name my printers. So if you look at it right now, they're just labeled one through eight. And when I had four of them, I thought, oh, I'm going to name them after the Bad Batch. So I was like, I'll have Hunter, I almost said Echo, Hunter, Crosshair, Wrecker, and Tech. And then I was like, okay, well, then I added a couple more and then I was like, okay, well, I could put Echo and Omega. And now I'm like, well, I've got eight now. Do I do something like just other clones now, like Rex or Fives? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, and let me know if you thought this was interesting enough to where I should do more kind of what am I doing today type videos. I do a lot of different types of stuff. It seems like every day I'm doing something different, whether that's 3D modeling or making improvements. Um, I've got a lot of resin projects coming up that might be fun to show off. But yeah, let me know uh, what you think and what I should work on next. Thanks.